So check this out. Today, I'm gonna be giving you some tips, some tricks, some hacks and all that to save you some money, save you some frustration when dealing with oil paints. Now, before we get into that video, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll give you guys a moment. All right, now let's get into the video. All right, so this first tip is gonna save you a lot of money. It's recycling your paint thinner that you use to clean your brushes. So this right here is a silicone tank. That's what you'll be working with. You also need an empty container, just a cup or a mug. You'll need your gam saw and you'll need, this is a powder knife. So you'll need this just to scoop out some of the debris and excess paint. Now this will only work if you let the paint settle in your silicone tank or you might be using something else to clean your brushes but the paint has to settle and separate from the paint thinner so you see on top of there it's pretty clear right but all that excess paint and debris is right at the bottom so what we're actually going to do is we're going to pour it out into here into our cup and then we're going to clean out the tank and the excess we're going to put in this container as you can see you know it's it's all in there this smells pretty nasty <laughs> so i'm just going to pour this out into the cup and make sure that you're wearing gloves when you're doing this that's very important you don't want this stuff to get all over your hands and in your skin and everything so you'll see there there's some of that debris at the bottom so we're just going to go ahead and remove this remove the coil clean off the coil clean out the tank got a rag here for that now some people have talked about trouble getting this out of the tank it's actually pretty easy flip it on the side squeeze it and you just gotta kind of wiggle it out so now when we look at the bottom here you see all the extra paint and debris that you cleaned off your brush you take our empty container we just pour it straight in. Then we're just gonna take our palette knife. And we're just gonna scoop all that out right in there. The reason why you have to put it in the container is because you cannot pour paint thinner down the drain, down your toilet. It is actually against the law. So with this, you keep it all in one container and then when you're ready to dispose of it, you call your city and they'll direct you where to bring it. So there we go, clean tank, clean quill. We're gonna put it back in the same way we took it out. Pop it in there. Flip it over so that the coil is sticking up. Then we're gonna pour back in our paintbrush cleaner. Then we're gonna add some new paint thinner to the mix. Boom. Doing this is gonna save you a lot of money instead of always disposing of your paint thinner when it gets all mucky and muddy. You just gotta let it settle, clean out the debris, fill it up again, you're good to go. All right, next up, glass palette. And then just an old piece of clothing. So this is just an old t-shirt, glass scraper. Now you're thinking, how is all of this gonna save me some money? Well, first off, the glass palette, it's better than the other palettes in my opinion because when you're done with your paint, you just scrape it off. There we go. And you wipe it in your shirt right now with that being said the way that it will save you money is that you don't have to constantly use your um your paper towels or whatnot to clean off your palettes and put the, the, the debris in and whatnot so you're saving money there then with the glass palette compared to let's say the disposable palettes where you peel off the paper again you're, you're gonna run out eventually. You're gonna have to buy a new one. With the glass palette, 
just scrape it, scrape off the excess paint, the dried up paint, whatever, and then you're good to go for your next session. Now, one thing I can suggest, and that's also going to save you some money, is keeping it simple with the paints that you buy. Now, typically people will say, you know what, just start off with the primary. So start off with your red, your yellow, your ultramarine, get a brown in there, white and black. Yes, that works fine. But also, I thought it's, I think it's a good idea to also throw in your, your cayenne colors, your quinacridone, and also get a green in there. There are certain shades that you're going to mix, or sorry, colors that you're going to mix that is not going to give you the same results as just having the primaries. So for example, we're taught that when you mix red and blue, it's going to give you purple. So the typical person will think I mix cadmium red, ultramarine blue, I get purple. But it's not going to give you the same results as mixing a quinacridone magenta and a cobalt teal. And I'm going to show you guys the two, the difference between the two. So let's start off with our cadmium red, ultramarine blue, mix that together. And you would think that, okay, I'm going to get purple, but actually it's pretty much brown. That's not what you want, right? So then let's go over to our quinacridone magenta and our cobalt teal. Mix it together. And look at that already. Look at that color. That's that's a super cute color. <laughs> that is absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Who wouldn't want to paint with that? So as you can see, the, the, the clear difference between the two. Look at that. Now, I also added to the palette some quadacridone magenta and some ultramarine blue. Let's see what we get with that. And again, we get a nice dark, rich purple. Look at that. Nice, rich, dark purple, then we got a lighter purple. But if you just went with the primaries and you just mix your cad red, your ultramarine blue, you would get a brownish color, which is not what you would be looking for when you're putting together a purple. So make sure you have your cyan and your magenta on your palette. Make sure that you add it to the paints that you get when you first start out. Now my next tip that's gonna save you a lot of money is buy big. Now what I mean by that is buy the bigger tubes of paint instead of the smaller tubes. I use Gamlin paints. This is 37 mLs, this is 150. The current price of the 37 mL is $16.20, while the 150 is $40.80. So if we take 150, 150 mLs, and divide it by 37, that gives us 4.05. So that means you would have to get four tubes of the 37 mL to equal up to that 150. Now, if we take the 4.05 and times it by 620, which is the current price of the 37 mLs, you get a grand total of 64.80. So it will cost you $64.80 to buy four tubes of the 37 mLs. Meanwhile, you can get the 150 ml, which is 40.80 and save yourself some money. Now, my next tip is put your medium in a squeeze bottle. Now here I have some stand oil, this is unopened. This is some liquid. This liquid I put in the squeeze bottle. The reason why is if you look at the tips here, this is a lot smaller. So that's gonna help you control how much liquid you use on your palate. And also it's gonna stop you from overflowing too much liquid and using an amount that you don't need and then you're just gonna throw it out and waste money. See with, with this bigger one, you're more likely to do that. The smaller one, you have more control. Now I'm not gonna open up this bottle, but you can pretty much guess how much will come out of it and how much harder it is to control with how big the opening is. But let me go ahead and show you with the squeeze bottle. So I already have some there. But let's say we wanna add some more to it. You see it's just a small amount that comes out that gives you more control. That will save you some money and that will save you from trashing 
some excess that you have on the palate because you poured out too much. Now my next tip is storing your paints. Now let's say you mixed up a lot of a color or you mix the color that you really like and you're not gonna use it all in one session. Well, hey, we have this little storage container that you can put your colors in and you can stick that in the freezer until you're ready to go again. I've done this myself. Now I'm not saying you can leave it in the freezer for a month, two months, for weeks on end. I've done this and I've had it in the freezer for about two, three days. And when I was ready to paint, paint again, then I took it out, let it thaw, and no problem, I was able to use that color again. Now a lot of time you'll hear people talk about they have trouble keeping their brush clean, paint will get in the ferrule and it will ruin the brush. Well, here's the thing. If you get one of these brushes, they usually come in a set. They'll come in nylon, which is, this is what the nylon brush is, or they'll come in the steel wool. We take this, we clean the paint out of the ferrule. That's gonna save your brushes, save you from ruining your brush and having to buy new ones. All right, so after you clean your brush and your paint thinner, what you wanna do, grab some linseed oil soap, get it wet, get the brush wet. Then I take my brush, I run it over the linseed oil soap, get it deep in the bristles. Then I take that nylon brush and push the paint out of it. Then we give it a nice quick rinse. And then there we go, we have a nice clean brush. And one other thing that's gonna save you some money is having the right tools for the right job and having certain tools for certain jobs. Now, for me, I have two sets of paint. I have a paint set where it's student grade paint or water mixable oil paints, and I typically use that for my art studies or just, you know, quick little projects I wanna do and get the idea out. And then I have my more expensive artist grade paints that I use for commissions, portfolio pieces, or pieces that I'm gonna be putting in a gallery. I would also recommend you go out there and get you some canvas paper or a paint pad. This pretty much acts just like canvas. And the reason why I recommend this is because it's good when you're doing your studies. Let's say you're doing a hand study, you gotta paint a bunch of hands and you gotta practice that. Well, you go ahead and do it in your canvas pad and that saves you from having to do it on a canvas that you gotta buy, that's gonna cost you a lot more money. So there you have it, my tips and tricks to help you guys out with your oil paints and also help you save some money. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Peace.